category, game, learning, music, lifestyle. Choose a language, English. Welcome everybody. Uh, Simba's hiding right here. <clears throat> welcome everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. <clears throat> Click start streaming with your broadcasting software when you have finished your stream, be sure. <laughs> what? I'm trying to go live on another platform at the same time as this one, but uh, it looks like it ain't happening. Waiting for your connection. Click start streaming within your broadcasting software. Broadcasting software? Ugh. Anyway, looks like I'm not gonna be able to go live here today. We'll do it next time. What's up, Mike? What's up, Evie? Welcome everybody. Crystal, let me know when we're live on news.therawfoodworld.com backslash live. Welcome everybody. Thanks for all, uh, thanks Joanne. Thank you for going live on Facebook. The link to raw food from the email d didn't work. It's gonna work in a second. Um, you, it's just a matter of time. <clears throat> all right, 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 all right. Um, someone asked if I like ashwagandha. Yes, it's one of my favorite herbs, actually. It actually has been shown in clinical studies to lower cortisol levels. It's good for exercising and things like that. Um... Chris, are we live on news.therawfoodworld.com backslash live? I think I saw a question there too. I'm going to go there right now. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. Here it. Okay, refresh. Hey, Crystal, we're not live on the news website yet. What's going on? Okay. Oh, we got lots of questions here today. Okay, so um, welcome everybody. We're just trying to get everything live here. Let me see if they got it live here on the main website where we send everybody. There we go. Okay, I'm live. Okay. So Facebook Live is what people are seeing here. Soon, hopefully, I'll get my YouTube streaming privileges back. It'll be a lot more better. Okay, so let's take a look here. Hi, Matt. Asking this for someone else who recently watched one of your videos where you mentioned experimenting with products to reduce eliminate gray hair. Is there anything you can recommend as of now? Thank you. He Sha Wu is what someone said here, and that's probably one of the best products, but um, I'm in the process of sourcing a product, it's not for the gray hair aspect, but it has inside of it what is needed in crazy amounts for helping with this. Um, with this, I've been actually taking this every single day. This new product, um, it's going to seriously take two months to like source it though properly. So I don't even like talking about it right now. I'm so excited about it. It's ridiculous. This is going to be very helpful for a lot of people. But he shall we in the meantime. Okay. Okay, so this is not this is not the discussion. Today is supposed to be social issues, um, which is fine. Um, I'm answering questions anyways. Do I need a collagen supplement if I use silica supplements? Generally, no, because collagen. Okay, first off, collagen. There's lots of components needed to build collagen in the human body, and silica is a main one. That's why in clinical studies, when people have taken the organo silica that their collagen levels have boosted up to 19%. Um, it's more about pro eating protein. Everybody gets enough protein, I'm sure. And then making sure you're digesting the protein properly, making sure you have an, an acidic stomach to actually digest the protein, making sure you're getting the minerals 
to activate the enzymes that actually rebuild collagen from protein. There's so many different aspects and scenarios that we have to watch out for. So the main thing is eat healthily. Then everything's gonna be in line here. <clears throat> but if you feel like taking collagen supplements, there's a lot of thoughts and theories in regards to this. And if you, especially if you think it's gonna work, then be, you know, be my guest. Someone says they love me and what I'm doing. Keep it up. I shall. What's up, Bruce? Okay. <clears throat> oh, man. Simba. Simba. Sim <laughs> anyway, we're going to be talking about social issues in a second. <clears throat> okay. Um, what's up, Mary Phillips? What do you suggest for gallstones? Okay, we got all sorts of questions. Yes, we have He Shall Woo on our website. He Shall Woo, we got the Jing Herbs one. Um, okay. What do you suggest for gallstones? Okay, for gallstones, the number one step is to first eliminate the foods that are causing the gallstones which are refined sugars, processed starches, breads, all these different foods, because over time that will start to build up gallstones in the human body because you're putting particles that don't break down in the human body inside the human body. So the number one, if you don't, you wanna eat healthily. That's like the key to everybody's questions here. Eat healthily and then you can start doing things to aid the elimination of gallstones. Um, for example, grapefruit juice has something called salicylic acid that breaks that type of thing down. Um, lots of vegetable juices, carrot, beet, cucumber juice would be really good for that. Um, but you have to eat healthily at the same time. Okay, what can you do for allergies? It depends what the allergies are coming from, what are the allergies, what are the symptoms, but generally we wanna eat as healthy as we can. Do you have any good cure for sciatic um, nerve pain? You, that's generally when like a disc is off or something and it's causing an issue. I mean, that's like saying if someone chops their arm off, is there like a, a product they could take for that? But anyway, in terms of pain, uh, um, you can take, oh, come on. You can take um, CBD oil. It has the potential to work. If it's the lack of activation of receptors in the human body um, that's preventing you from experiencing less pain, then you definitely wanna go on that. Dude, we're getting all sorts of questions today. What is going on here? <clears throat> okay. All right. Um, so, just checking to see if there's any more questions here. Okay, so, um, okay, so Brian writes, I'm going on a raw food diet. I spent more than four months without caffeine, no tea or coffee, okay? I was doing well and lost about 30 pounds. Then all of a sudden I felt like my mind was running on about 5% power. It, is this something that people normally run into when making a transition? I would also be very interested in coming to one of your retreats if I can get the finances together at the right time. Our June retreat is about sold out. I mean, I pretty much wanna say it is sold out. We might have like one spot left, I'm not sure. September is the next one, and then there's December. Um, in terms of caffeine, if you, if you stopped it, how long ago? Four months, you've gone four months without it. Generally, the withdrawals will pop in before then, but you're used to stimulation. And how long were you doing caffeine? So you probably went into like a healing crisis of the caffeine, you're probably desiring it right now. And we also have to keep in mind that, especially because you're not doing stimulation anymore, your body kinda, okay, so me personally, I get natural energy, I do zero stimulation. I haven't even eaten raw chocolate in a really long time, except for I just tried a sample and I was like flying with crazy amounts of focus. But I pretty much just eat raw food with zero stimulation and I get energy just from natural energy without stimulation. It's, it's pretty amazing. So when you start to improve your dietary lifestyle and start eliminating these things, 
we were doing, we were getting stimulation from coffee and teas and all these other things, which gives us a boost. But then there's like the downside afterwards. But when you eliminate it, you have to go through all the withdrawals from all the times you've done this. Your body's always cleansing out, but now you're like going really deep because you're eliminating something completely from your intake. You don't really get rid of something from your body completely. Like you don't get like real deep until you eliminate something from it completely. It's just like the heroin addict, when they ha are forced to eliminate heroin, they go absolutely crazy, they're kicking and screaming and trying to break through walls and stuff. So it's when you eliminate something completely, that's why there's a big difference between 90% raw, 95% raw, and 100% raw, because all hell breaks loose when you start eliminating things completely from your intake. So right now what's probably happening is you're outpouring, and you also have to keep in mind there's a lot going on with energy levels for all sorts of people. Me personally, today I had crazy amounts of energy. It was great. Yesterday was a very difficult day for me. I mean, I'm a 100% raw food eater, I eat very healthily, but my energy levels were low. I was like fighting and battling, my kids were here, and I was like trying to like, uh, it, was, it was like a lot of work. And um, there's so many factors and scenarios besides food that can cause us um, low energy to happen. Um, for example, stress. Maybe there's some sort of emotional, spiritual thing going on, whatever. Whatever the case is, we, we never know. Um, maybe someone's doing like, has a voodoo doll of you and all, one day and they're like playing with it that day. <laughs> all I'm saying is we never know what the case could be on why we're tired and things like this. The main thing is that it's normal to not be on your game all the time. Yesterday was miserable for me in terms of energetic energy levels, right? Today I was flying. It's like, but I didn't think something was wrong with me. I didn't try to analyze the situation. I didn't like go into thinking, oh, it's because I stopped doing this or I was in keto and I'm detoxing toxins from diesel gas fumes. Okay, maybe I did think about that. Um, and, <laughs> And so what I'm saying is there's so many possibilities and scenarios and it's okay to not feel good all the time. It's okay to have downs. It's actually great. It's like part of life. Our body is like flesh and bone with eyeballs and things like this. And there's some sort of life force that keeps us up, moving, moving my head, alive. What, how is that even happening? It's like my soul or something, but what we are is pretty much just flesh. I don't mean to get all gory and stuff. And if I wasn't in here, I'd probably collapse into a little ball on the floor of like, anyway. So what I'm saying is that we're, this thing, this vehicle we're in cleanses, it repairs, it regenerates. We have to be okay with the ups and downs. Many people, fall and fail during the downs because they think something's wrong, they go to the doctor, they confirm it, now you're being negative, placebo affected into believing that something's seriously wrong with you, yada, yada, yada. So <clears throat> it's like you're doing really good. You're, you've eliminated caffeine. It's like, so yes, it might be because of that and you have to get through that push because there are physical symptoms of withdrawals. But just think about it. It's just going to be better and better as time goes on. All right. Okay, so... Um, okay, so someone's saying... We're going to get into social issues in a second. Hi, Matt. My kidney is damaged. Okay, so first off, how do you know your kidney's damaged? Are you just believing this? And now this is your lifelong illness or like they have an x-ray showing you actual data or is it just because numbers on a black piece of paper are different at this moment in time versus another point in time? Um, okay, so, and bring down, okay, so any suggestions to improve GFR, glomerular filtration rate, and bring down the creatinine and potassium levels in blood serum I am vegan. May I know if there are any potassium chelators or binders? Conventional medicine says high levels of potassium greater than is bad for the heart. I appreciate your response. 
Okay, so you, any suggestions for bringing down creatinine and potassium levels? Okay, first off, just because a person's vegan does not mean they're healthy. A person can be vegan and eat crazy amounts of refined sugar and other harmful foods. So the number one thing that we wanna do is eat healthily and then our body, we're gonna talk about the potassium levels in a second, but our bodies naturally balance out. That's how it works. The reason why you're out of balance right now is because your body is always trying to reach homeostasis and if the, the worse you treat your body, the more hard of a time it's gonna have to reach these, these homeostatic balance positions and the more numbers are, are gonna be whacked off if the, the worse you treat yourself. So the first thing is to eat healthily and so you're wanting to lower potassium levels Potassium and sodium kind of like work against each other, like not work against it, it's like a, a, a seesaw. The more sodium you take, the potassium is gonna go down. So what you probably wanna do, you don't wanna like have unhealthy sodium, I would recommend drinking celery juice, like lots of it. And you'll probably notice um, some changes happen there. But again, I'm not a doctor. Before making any changes, talk to a healthcare practitioner. But the main thing is your diet. You gotta eat healthy and then other things start coming into play. Now diet is critical. It, it, from the physical standpoint, it helps heal all sorts of issues. If why you're having physical issues is from treating yourself poorly to where it has a difficult time to go into homeostasis. Now, there are certain things um, that are emotional and spiritual that can cause us to have ailments and diseases too. For example, if you're stressed out all the time, this isn't something you could see with the human eye, but your cortisol levels are gonna be up like crazy um, and, and stress can seriously come just from a spiritual issue that you can't cope with or an emotional issue. So it's always important to try to focus and try to get in a relaxed state. It's almost like a game. This is actually key for overcoming social issues that we're gonna talk about in a second. But keeping your stress levels intact is almost like a game. It's like, what do you have, to, you can't do anything physically, you can take ashwagandha, because that helps, we have that on our website, therawfoodworld.com, but that, that helps with cortisol levels, it shows in clinical studies. But there are things that we do, they call it meditating, spiritually, some people call it meditating, I'm saying focusing, so many different possibilities and scenarios, that we do that are invisible to the human eye that can lower stress levels. Sometimes people take deep breaths, but we've all gotten angry before and we've actually focused and we've stopped our anger. We can't explain that, how we actually did that. How did we calm our anger down instead of like what some people do is they'll take something and throw it through a glass window and scare everybody around them. But we have the spiritual capacity and ability to when we get angry to not express it and do the spiritual work to allow it to leave. So it's the same thing with stress. If you can do that with anger, you can do that with stress. And that's like one of the greatest keys to longevity, to health, to spiritual health to emotional strength is to do this. And so it's almost like when you're stressed, don't go into like victim mode or like, oh, why is my life so bad? It's almost like, oh, this is exciting. Let's hop on this video game right here and figure out how to be as calm and peaceful in this mo crazy moment. And there are times throughout the day where it gets really crazy. For example, today I had the kids crazy business things were happening, I had a friend who hurt themselves, all these things were going on at once. Intensity, it's almost like trying to, those are like, it's almost like outside factors you don't necessarily have control over, but internally, the key, and then once it's over, it's like, <sighs> but the, more, the better you do during the time of chaos, the more easy the, <sighs> is and the more relaxed and quicker you become relaxed. So it's almost like exciting for these moments when stress is happening, all this stuff is going on. 
because it's kind of like a chance to prove ourselves. This is like a big thing. It's like far reaching. It's like, um, it goes beyond. It's like, um, it's almost like, let's say you're teaching your someone how to, okay, check this out. If you have a child and you're the type of person who gets angry all the time, the child is going to learn how to get angry and not calm it down. But if you have the ability to, when you get angry, to do the focus work and have it dissipate and go away, then on some level, whether it's conscious, unconscious, or just from visual sight or whatever it is, you're teaching your child to do the same thing. So it's almost like this is really far reaching and fun and it goes, it penetrates on a soul level. Some people believe in reincarnation, some people don't, some people believe in whatever, but that's the level that this type of work penetrates on. It's like um, you learn something and it could be everlasting maybe, or maybe not. I, but this is, it, all I'm saying is, it's, it's pretty huge. It's, it's very, it's like the number one exciting thing that you can do. For example, <laughs> Where is this coming from? Some people get excited about money. I used to be in that um, 10 years ago before I hit rock bottom. Um, and that's like, almost like some sort of purpose. Uh, and But in the long run, what does that do for you? I mean, you're gonna die and nothing that's gone. And then did you gain anything on a spiritual level? <laughs> High fat versus low fat raw vegan. Okay, there's a normal question. So, if you think about it, that's like a really good intent and something to work at on an ongoing basis. That's like exciting. That's like life transform transformative. It's like, oh, dude. see, see, can you stay calm when there's a cat's rear end, rear, rear end in your face? Okay, okay, okay. So the person with the allergy problem, like I get allergies when I like pet him like crazy because I can't help it, he's so cute. And then I, I start getting messed up and stuff like that. So what I do is I just don't do that. Okay, okay Simba, please, come on. I'm talking to people here. Okay, so um, we're about to go into social issues in a second. I'm just seeing if there's any more questions here. This has been pretty fun so far. Okay. I had raw chocolate and maca and I'm running all over the place. That's fine, I'm not saying, I'm just saying I'm really ex extreme with things. Do you take Shilajit? Yes. I started drinking Hei Shabu again, that's awesome. Okay. Okay, so we answered all those questions and we're gonna go into social issues. Someone said high fat versus low fat vegan. I'm a fan of high fat. Um, I did the opposite. I, I was always high fat, but I always did a lot high carb at the same time. And um, ever since I went high fat and dropped low carb, I've noticed I've been starting to look younger. Um, I feel better, less mucus. Um, I wonder what if I would have been like that the entire time, if I would have aged less. I don't know, I'm kind of excited to see what happens over the next 10 years with me from going high fat, low carb. I'm not saying fruit's bad for you, but in the capacity that I did it, um, it's just crazy. <clears throat> okay, any thoughts on muscle testing? I'm not a big fan of muscle testing. <clears throat> uh, that's wrong with you. Anyway, no, there could be some legitimacy to it, but it's such a fine line of legitimacy to versus good intent versus bad intent. Uh, you just have, it's like going to a psychic on some level. A little different. 
I'm not a fan of that type of thing. Not at all. I'm not gonna go into my reasoning. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Okay, so, <clears throat> okay, so they say, other than muscle testing, what can I do on my own? Why are you worrying about food sensitivities? I don't worry about food sensitivities. If we like look for things to worry about. If something doesn't jive with me, then I don't eat it. It's that simple. Maybe I'll eat it for two, three days straight and then I'm like, okay, I gotta stop. I listen to my body, okay, I'm done with it for now. Like I've been eating strawberries nonstop and I started eating apple in my cribs and it was really good and I was like, oh, the strawberries. It's just like, we just gotta stop worrying. There's always a problem. Okay, so this week's theme is, oh, I wish the other streaming worked. That's a point. This week's theme is, um, how do you listen to your body? So when you're, when you're about to, when it feels like, oh, you know what, that kind of gives me like, you know, it makes my stomach uneasy looking at those strawberries right now. Maybe it almost feels like you're about to vomit. <laughs> Not really, but like, just does it like, are you excited about eating it? Or are you just like, oh, it's like, I'm done with that right now. Like, it's just a, it's just like a, like that type of thing. Okay, social issues. Okay, so um, it's been crazy today. Normally I like, I, I do articles. I just did a um, social issue article that went out Monday. People have been raving about it. It's on our website. If you're not on our newsletter list, go to therawfoodworld.com and join it. <clears throat> so um, you can get all my articles. I usually do one every Monday. Okay, so social issues. Whenever you make a life change, whether it's um, improving your diet, uh, doing crazy amounts of yoga, um, starting to become frugal and saving money, starting on a new business path, starting on a new spiritual path, anything that goes against the norm, generally you're gonna be hit with all sorts of adversity. And that's what we're gonna be discussing today. Now, what I like to do is, because we're I'm like the raw food guys, I like to talk about food and how food is a very good pathway to physical, emotional, and spiritual health when you eat healthily. As soon as you improve your dietary lifestyle, whether you want to go vegetarian, vegan, raw food is even the most crazy then you're gonna be hit with social issues and um, adversity from probably family, friends, and society. For example, in society, I, I couldn't go to a sports game, I can't go to a movie theater and get food. I can't go to a theme park. I have to bring food because they don't cater to people who eat healthily. It's like impossible. So everything is working against you in terms of the system. So you have to understand like, that's the system, that's what most people are doing. And now you're going against the norm, so there's gonna be forces working against you. There's gonna be adversity through all sorts of avenues, especially the people closest to you. <clears throat> but the good news is, we always look at these social issues as being a bad thing, when in actuality, Take your time, Simba, yeah, okay. It's actually a good thing, these social issues. It's almost like, if it wasn't there, then you're just going with the norm. And the social issues are actually a really good thing because it enables you the opportunity to overcome it. And the benef one of the main benefits of eating healthily is not only getting the physical benefits from the food you're eating, but actually having to go through this process of going through adversity. Because if you actually make it through the other end, because a lot of people can't succeed on a raw food diet, we've given many reasons why, willpower and other reasons, but this is social issues is a big one. So 
when you make it through to the other side, if you make it through, because most people don't make it through the other side, you have more freedom in your life because you have stood your ground and you have learned all the ins and outs on how to not allow these types of things to impact you anymore. You are free from it. It is a new level of freedom in your life. And that is extremely beautiful thing. We're gonna go all through all the ins and outs through that right now. It's like a very beautiful thing. So <clears throat> you're gonna be tested from all different directions when you improve your dietary lifestyle. And the people closest to you are going to be testing you. And there's nothing, there's no, you don't wanna hate them, they're not doing anything wrong. It's all in you actually. It's about what you allow and how you react to people it has nothing to do with them. As soon as you become a victim, you're the one who's not succeeding here. Because if you think about it, you might blame other people for being bad to you, but we all are bad to other people in some way or another, which we'll go to into in a second. Okay, let's just do, and a lot of it is unconscious, that we, me, I do things unconsciously that probably hurt other people, and so do you. So we can't point the finger at people. Just so we, we have an understanding of what we're talking about, a lot of time when people go improve their dietary lifestyle, they have this thing where they judge. And when you judge a person, let's say they bring out Domino's pizza on the dinner table, when you judge a person, they feel it. It is out to them. And you may, inside you're unconsciously, oh, I'm better than that person. You're a good person, don't get me wrong, but I eat healthy, so this, this, and this. I had one person comment on my newsletter because I use this example about McDonald's and I'm saying you, you think you're better than someone because you don't eat McDonald's and they do? And I gave this example, a person could be eating McDonald's and be a really good person, a person eats healthily, they, can, um, they could be a murderer. I hear you, Gypsy, my dog is hurting also. He's, I let him get too fat. No, he's having arthritic problems anyways. And he's not even that old. Anyway, so, um, so I had someone respond saying, well, a murderer is not gonna be a person who eats healthily. Okay, first off, there's something off there. That's almost like a judgment in itself. Um, I have a friend who went and studied law a little bit and they say that people that are like, that commit crimes and murders and rapes and all these different things, they're just like normal people among everybody. You won't even notice them, a difference in them. They can eat healthily, they can eat unhealthily, it doesn't matter. So we have to like, I just thought I'd bring that up because that was a comment on my article and I was just like, uh, it, just, it doesn't feel right to me. That's like, so it's almost like we unconsciously judge people based off of what they eat. Because you feel so good Eating healthily, you think the whole world, well, that's what I used to think. You know, in order to be spiritual, you have, you have to eat healthy. No. So we unconsciously do things to other people so we can't point the finger at people and be a victim. So the key is to become free, to, to create freedom versus become a victim and woe is me type of deal. We wanna get out of the game. So what I wanted to say here is, you're gonna be tested from all different levels. For example, you improve your diet and maybe a friend will come up to you and they're gonna push worry on you. Now as we talked about, judging produces this feeling in this person, when someone does something like this worry thing, it's an unconscious tactic, uh, maybe it's not a tactic, There's maybe this not even a tactic, but the other end, you're gonna feel probably doubt in your being because they're worried about you. They're kind of like pushing that upon you. Now, all that is is a feeling and sensation. Now, is that going to stop you from improving your diet or making life choices? For some people, it will. 
And then some, some instances you're gonna be tested to where things are more blatant. For example, a family member might just straight out say, you look emaciated and start chuckling in front of all your friends and all, all of a sudden you're like feeling that, everyone starts laughing, all you're feeling is feelings and sensations again. So are you gonna, that feeling is kind of like generating something like, I don't belong. I want to get off this diet or this life change or this spiritual path or whatever you're doing so I can be accepted by these people and feel and get back in, so I could be with them again and be part of this society, part of this um, group of people. So based off of feelings and sensations, um, we tend to not follow our choices and things like that. <clears throat> so the people closest to us are the ones that are know all of our weaknesses. So this is where we're gonna be tested. He's just whining, it's just driving me crazy. <clears throat> like for example, another family might, member might say, you're too skinny, you look way, you look emaciated. Or you might hear laughter in the background wondering if they're doing that to you. And when they, all of these different things are like hardcore penetrating. Sometimes people start coming, calling you a, a Quaker or a Cracker or a health nut. And it's like all of this is like, you feel everything. You feel everything. And all this is is feelings and sensations that you're going through in these moments in time. Now, of course, it might look at us, we might wanna look at this and be like, how could you do this to me? But on some level, we're doing it to other people. It's not about the people, it's about spiritually how you react and handle it. All of a sudden, they call you a name, it feels like acid in your chest or whatever it is on a spiritual level, just like we dissipate anger and we try to stay calm, in all these incidences, we wanna focus, try to stay calm, and not let that impact, it's almost fun. It's almost fun. And when you, I can't explain how to do it because it's invisible. You, you all, many of you have stopped the anger. You know how to do that. So you have to experiment in all these certain instances. And when you're in the midst of it, like we were talking about earlier, it's the most intense. Like today I told you it was really stressful. My kids, a person's hurt, um, business is going crazy. It's really intense, all these outside factors. But I try to stay calm and now, and then later in the day, because I stay calm, it's much easier for me to get over right now. So even though it feels like you might be failing in those moments, you're not. That's part of the game. The, I don't want to say game, but that's part of the process of becoming free. And it's like an inner knowing. It's kind of like some people in meditation will call it one thing and others will call it faith and others will call it like whatever. So it's like... Remember, it, all it is is feelings and sensations. And if you can, I don't want to say master, but under, get an understanding of all these different scenarios. Oh, you have to go through it over and over again to where it impacts you less and less. Then you're on your way to some serious freedom on a social, emotional, spiritual level. So are you going to allow feelings and sensations to stop you from making life decisions, from improving your diet, from taking up a spiritual path, from, from going traveling to another country from working in from California and deciding to move to an office in New York, whatever it is. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So let's just say this. Okay. So this chaos builds up when you make a life change, like improving your dietary lifestyle and it becomes really intense and you don't want to deal with it in that moment because it's the most intense it's ever been. So a lot of people go back to the cozy norm where the chaos is just, it's, it's not there anymore. But that cozy norm is why many of us are so suffer, are suffering, are suffering so much and miserable. It's not, that same exact feeling that you're feeling in the chaos is just more subtle and contained when you're just going with the norm and the flow. The games, the gossiping, the snobby, whatever it is, and then you're kind of just like agreeing with them and you can't, and like you don't really want to agree with them that they're actually saying this about another person or this or that or that, but we're in this misery state contained. It's, it's all contained and that's being part 
and not, that's like, this is the, this is where you're staying by not going through the chaos. What I'm trying to show you is go through the chaos, reach the other end of it. You're no longer stuck in this contained realm anymore. You're completely free from it because you've learned all the ins and outs of it to where this doesn't affect you anymore. Gypsy, I will be with you soon. That's my dog's name. <clears throat> so, so again, we don't, it, this is not about moving on from our family and friends. I mean, you can do that if you want, but I'm not suggesting that because you could just start the same patterns with another group of people. It's not the people, it's how you react and how you handle situations and things like this. You can be with your family and friends forever. You're just gonna be different. And generally when that happens, there's gonna be crazy friction and there might be a departing for a while before you come back and maybe you're just not interested in coming back. It doesn't matter, but there's, you're not run, we're not running away here. So what tends to hold us back a lot of the time is fear. For example, going against the norm, it's almost, you're gonna run into some issues and these issues are gonna be like f family, friends, arguments, that have nothing to do, it's like you're just, it's almost like you're just like, they're gonna, there's gonna be like lash out on some kind of level when you do something like this. And so the fears come into play like, oh my goodness, what is that person gonna think of me? What if they tell another person about, that I'm a bad person? Or what if they abandon me? Or what if they tell a coworker this or whatever? That, and it almost wants to bring us back into that cozy space again because of all these fears. But again, now that all we're feeling right now is sensations of fear. So you're gonna allow these fears, doubts, insecurities, all these other things, stop you from making life choices, choosing you what you put in your mouth. Going, starting a new business, starting on a new path, going, flying to another country for a year. What, like, it's crazy, we, we, we wouldn't, wouldn't wanna do that. So if, if you can gain this understanding, it's not the person, because it's gonna be that wherever you go in the world, in the norm, that you're just gonna start up the same patterns with different people. It's all about you and how you react. And can you do this anger technique that we're talking about, stay calm in every situation, and not allow these people to impact you to where they're making life choices for you, or to where you're throwing, and sometimes it's, gonna hurt but hurt is just another feeling and sensation you can hold on to that hurt for years and years and years and loop it how could this person do this to me or when you get hurt you can try to focus uh, try to understand it in every aspect possible to where it's completely out of your system in a very short period of time I'm not saying like a, a day maybe a month maybe a year while the other person ten years later is still pissed off at you Everything is like, you don't want to be holding on to that type of stuff. It's almost like if you get hurt, this is just another part of the game. But it's not a game. It's like building strength in you so you can become a better person. So we're coming on the edge of something very, very interesting here that we got to watch out for. And that's what we're going to talk about next. So here you are. You've decided to take this path. You're improving your diet. Your family is going crazy at you. Your family, friends are going crazy at you. There's all this ruckus in the world. People are hurting you, but you're sitting there. You're wanting to figure out all of this. You want to be this strong rock, this light in this world to where these things can't hurt you on an ongoing basis so your light can shine even more and teach people. And here you are. You have gained a huge understanding on how to do this. Like, you're more strong now. You could be in the midst of your family, your friends, and they're bagging on you about your diet. It doesn't even impact you anymore. Or you can actually be like, hey, you know, that's not cool. It hurts my feelings, whatever. And you're, you, you've gained a huge understanding. But what happens is we build up all this emotional strength. And a lot of the time, this is a trap because we convince ourselves that we're actually moving forward and we're actually doing really good. When in actuality, from the other end, we might be getting smacked down. And one of those things that we just talked about 
is judging. Because what's very common for people that improve their dietary lifestyle is they start to think that they are better than other people because they eat healthily. Oh, because they feel better than they used to, so they think they have something great on, an, on, on their side. So this feeling of like feeling better and like when and judging someone because of what they eat is kind of like coming on the other end. You've mastered all of these feelings and stuff like this over here, but now you're coming on the other end and failing over here and you've actually made zero progress. When you judge, it almost makes you feel kind of like high. It gives you like a, a feeling of being better than somebody. It makes you, it's almost like a temporary ego frill that you get temporary sensation from. But that right there is holding you back. And so, what I was saying before, you think you're better than someone because you don't eat McDonald's and they do? No, there's no difference. That person could be very happy, a good person, then someone's eating a Whole Foods diet and they're a murderer. Who's a better person? It doesn't matter. You can't judge someone based off of what they eat. In many religions, they talk about this. In like Eastern mysticism, you know, they don't, they're talking about not judging other people. In Christianity, the Bible says, I don't judge people. The God says, I don't judge people for what they eat. So I don't expect, you should not judge either what other people eat. There's so many different religions and spiritual practices that are teaching people not to do these things. So... The key is, we're not better than other people. Just the mere fact that you're judging is an unconscious act that you're doing in the, in the disguise of you being a good person that is actually, because they actually feel that. It actually hurts them on some level. And they're probably gonna be annoyed and not wanna be around you if you're continually judging them on an ongoing basis. So judging is something we really gotta watch out for. And so imagine you've done this path, you've mastered a lot of this stuff to where you are not being impacted, you're not being hurt by other people, and you're, you're back with your family and friends, you're at the family dinner, and all of a sudden they bring out Domino's pizza with pasta and all sorts of dishes on the table, and you sit there and you look at it, at this food, and you know, you brought your own salad or whatever it is, immediately, your reflex is to judge for some of us. And what we wanna do in this incident is do everything in our power to not judge, even, the ref even though the reflex is there. And while this is happening, this desire to judge, it almost feels like you're judging, but as long as you are doing everything in your power not to judge, this is how you transform. This is how you change your vibration. It's okay that the reflex is there as long as you are doing everything in your power going against it in every moment. As soon as you, you it's almost like a battle. It's like you're fighting in every moment to the point where you're gonna get to the point where it's just like, it's all gone. You're not even judging anymore. This is how you change your frequency. This is how you change your being. This is how you wanna grow. As soon as you surrender, become unconscious, stop focusing, and then you go into the judgment that is your reflex or whatever is there, now you're full out judging. So this is the, this is the spiritual work and we wanna be doing this on an ongoing basis is trying not to judge in every single moment possible. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so now that you've mastered this portion of social issues to where other people aren't impacting you anymore, this is great because you have more freedom. People can't hurt you anymore. You, we're still talking about the other end, thinking we're better. You gotta be careful with this responsibility. It's actually a responsibility. Because here you are, 
you got to watch out. We were talking about judging. Now you got to watch out for your ego. Because now here you are with a spouse, a family, and a friend. You, got, you went through all of your crap with this uh, new improved diet. You're strong in your will. You're, nobody can affect you anymore. So now they've accepted you for who you are. There's no more issues in regards to your diet with them. They're not going to say anything rude. They've accepted you. They realize there's no, there's no ins anymore. You're, you've completely mastered that. There's nothing they could do. So now here you are with this person and all of a sudden a dispute arises. And you guys are like in this ego battle and it feels pretty intense and there's like a pain and suffering going on. But because you kind of like overcome a lot of these issues from this work we're talking about, you have the ability to, you know, use your ego to, because you know exactly what button is going to piss them off. Maybe it's just like a little smirk that, that you're getting enjoyment through this and stuff like this. What is happening is, in a very subtle level, you, you don't, the key is to get out of this and learn all this, you want to stop playing the game. You want to stop playing the games with all these people. So now here you are in an ego battle, and you play, you're getting this frill of enjoyment that they're suffering on some sort of level, and you know that this little smirk is going to do that to them. You think you're better. So now, your ego, you're getting that frill on the other end. You think that you're doing good because you think you've mastered something, but really, you're, go you're going nowhere. What you're wanting to do is pull out of the game. You don't want to make them hurt. You're, you're losing your responsibility. Your energy gets drained, like all sorts of things like that. <clears throat> so we got to be extremely careful. And another example would be victim, becoming a victim in these arguments. So what a lot of us do is we become a victim and we're in the midst of an argument we become a victim purposefully. Maybe it's an unconscious pur purposefully. It's almost like a tactic becoming a vegan. A vegan. <laughs> a victim. Oh, man. That is funny. You become a victim. <laughs> and what this does is when you become a victim, what you're doing is, how could you do that to me? And what you do is like, you're pushing emotional garbage to make them feel guilty, to make them feel bad. So they will either, you get to prove your point, you'll get them to bow down to you. Some people become a victim for months and months and months while these other people are suffering or whatever. So this whole victim, this whole victim game that we play you're just doing the same thing on the other end. What we want to do is pull out of the game. So whenever you're, so you, okay, I think that's, okay. So maybe one of the reasons why you can't improve your diet and the reason why you're so weak and have so much despair is because whenever you make some sort of progress, you're judging other people. You're doing this or you're doing that and you're not building up the stre emotional strength that you need in order to do these types of things. So what we want to be doing is stop pointing the finger at people. You need to humble yourself and you got to start looking at yourself because it's not anybody but you. It's your reality here. And as soon as you point the finger, you're playing the game. Because if you live, leave this family and go to another family, you leave this group of friends and go to another group of friends, it's all about you're still the same person. You're going to still do the same game, same patterns that you've always done as you point the finger at everybody. So... Yeah, me too, dude. I'm not like... So, 
a lot, also a lot of the time what we do is we come up with excuses of why we're not gonna um, eat healthily. And there's nothing wrong in this. It's just a little bit of unconscious behavior. Normally like, for example, I use the example in my article where I've heard this many times, my family, my kids, my husband eats horribly, so I can't. So basically because of what other people put in their mouth, they have, you can't choose for your own self what you put in your mouth. I understand it's difficult, but let's just be real here that the reason why you're making this choice is not because of your family and friends and your family and your kids and pointing the finger at them. It's because you don't wanna deal with leaving that cozy, uncomfortable norm that we're talking about and have to go through the adversity from family, friends, and social issues because that's what's gonna have to happen. On top of that, you have to go through the physical withdrawals and issues, emotional issues, it's not an easy thing. And it's okay to not make the choice of eating healthily. It's only one path. You don't, it doesn't make you a bad person. You can't be judged for what you eat. But I'm just saying, let's just try to be more conscious here if you want to be and be like, hey, I understand that the reason why I'm not improving my diet has nothing to do with my beautiful kids or my husband. It's because I don't want to deal with this, this, and this. When you start looking at things from a truthful level, then you can, maybe it can help you change. Maybe it could be like, okay, maybe I'm gonna look at this weakness I have in mind. Maybe I'm actually gonna try to grow here. Maybe I'm gonna, maybe I don't need to improve my diet. I'm just gonna try to grow anyways without improving my diet. Maybe my, the thoughts of something being wrong with me because I don't eat the way I want, would ideally like to eat, maybe that's my spiritual issue. Maybe I should just like figure out how to be happy with my current diet. Instead of always worried about it, oh, my weight, or whatever it is. Because all that is more sensations and feelings. And that's what we want to learn and overcome. <clears throat> so, we can grow without any changes in our dietary lifestyle. This is just one of my favorite paths there is on the raw food diet. Because, number one you're gonna be forced to deal with this social adversity. And in order to succeed, you have to succeed. If you succeed on this diet, you have to succeed this and you have to overcome, which automatically make, give, makes you more free because you get an understanding of all of that. And then the side effects of a good diet are extremely amazing. Better than any, well, I would say there, it's more far reaching than any other path to this type of freedom because you're gonna reach your ideal weight, your blood pressure is gonna normalize, <laughs> your diabetes is gonna go away, you're gonna probably lose weight, you're gonna become more healthy, more beautiful. There's like all these amazing side effects. Now, if you're gonna get into yoga, you're gonna become more flexible and all these other great things, but if you're eating like not the best foods, then it's not gonna be as far impacting physically as the diet. Now, I wish that I could, um, answer all the questions because you guys know I answer every single question in every hangout. But I have to go pick up a friend who's at the hospital who I think is getting stitches right now. And uh, I also got to check out with my dog. Um, Crystal, if you could gather all these questions from all the platforms and I'll, I'll use them, send them to me like later today so I can take a look at them. Maybe I could use them for my next week's theme because we do a different theme every week. And I'll definitely answer them next week, hopefully. Every Tuesday we do this. Our June at cost specials just came live at therawfoodworld.com. We've got our goji berries back in stock, chlorella tablets, spirulina powder, spirulina tablets. Kinky Essential and King Tone are at cost right now. I'm not allowed to be doing that. I'm hoping we can keep it up for a long time. Um, what else? All sorts of things. And since we're bringing them early to you, the at cost specials, you could do May and June at cost specials at the same time. We have our new CBD oil at cost, the one that's derived from uh, tree bark and all sorts of other things. New, some new salad dressings. Um, thank you for tuning in, everyone. I wish I could read these comments right now, but this is a very rare thing where I gotta go handle other things. So, love everybody. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next week. Use the coupon code rawfood7 at therawfoodworld.com and bust through those social issues. Don't let other people determine other feelings and sensations determine what you decide to do on your life path, whether it's diet, business, going 
traveling, spiritual path, whatever it is. All right, harness that willpower, baby. Mwah.